Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. My last fragrance haul was so successful, I decided to do it again, but bigger and better, if that's even possible. Today, I will be unboxing some of the best fragrance brands. I have new Maison Francis Kurgian, Prada, new Saint Laurent, new Roja, these are truly some of the most anticipated launches of 2022. I've received countless messages from you regarding these fragrances, so I cannot wait to dig in. I'm going to unbox all of these fragrances and share my thoughts with you. The anticipation might actually kill me at this point. I've been waiting weeks to unbox this, so I'm going to begin with my latest blind buy. This is one of the Elevated Fragrances from Yves Saint Laurent Lavalier. This just launched. I received the email read the notes, and it sounded amazing, like something I would love, so I took a chance. This is my first elevated YSL fragrance. When I visited London in the spring, I went to Selfridges and they did have these fragrances at the YSL counter, but that is the one and only time I've ever seen them at a physical counter, so I know it's really difficult to smell them. They included a little sample of Lavalier with my purchase, so I can try the sample before I unbox it. It's a new fruity floral fragrance with keen notes of rose and fig. It's a union between masculine and feminine, a silky touch of luscious, delicate notes of creamy fig and sparkling black currant are enhanced by radiant rose, signing this composition with a green floral twist. The price is a little bit more expensive than the typical YSL fragrances, so I want to just be sure. It doesn't have a spray. I'm just going to shake a little bit of this on the blotter. Okay. Ooh, it does have a twist. It's so interesting. I like it. It's not what you expect when you think of a fruity floral. It's very creamy, soft, sensual. And I love the black currant. Now it's all over my fingers. It almost smells like bergamot or there's like a little citrusy zip. That must be the green floral twist. I'm not sure what I expected it to be. It smells a little bit different than what I had in mind, but I know I really like it. So I'm going to go ahead and unbox the fragrance so I can at least show you the bottle. I love this fragrance bottle with the very clean label. It looks very elegant, sophisticated. You can tell it's an elevated fragrance. It has the YSL in silver on top of the cap. Very pretty. Can definitely pick up on the fig and the rose. That green twist is starting to sneak back in. But I think it's a very pretty fragrance. I'm not sure I love it as much as some of the others. I definitely love it enough to keep it and wear it. I want to try it on the skin. Rouge Velour, I believe, is one that I really loved. Jumpsuit was another great fragrance. There are a couple really nice fragrances from YSL. I wish they were available more places so that people could smell them. Anything with rose and fig is immediately going to pique my interest. I think it is so pretty. I need to wear it on my skin, but first impression, I think this would be a really nice daytime fall winter fragrance. Next, I'm going to unbox the highly anticipated new launch from Maison Francis Kurgian 724. This is not a true first impressions because I wasn't really that interested in this fragrance and I did receive a couple questions whether or not I was planning to review it. I read the notes and it just didn't sound like my type of fragrance, didn't really sound like my style, but then I smelled a sample and I kind of fell in love. I don't know what happened to the sample. I only smelled it once, but I remember really liking it. So I requested to review this from Twisted Lily, which now carries the fragrance. And of course they always carry samples. So if you're interested in trying it, I would check out Twisted Lily. 724 was inspired by urban landscapes and their surroundings. You can see on the back of the label, you have a beautiful cityscape. Keynotes include Italian bergamot, aldehydes, floral bouquet, Egyptian Jasmine Absolute, Sweet Pea, Mock Orange, Sandalwood, and White Musk Accord. So initially when I read the notes in Inspiration, I just kind of thought, okay, it sounds kind of clean and fresh, but probably leans a bit masculine and wouldn't be something that I would really be interested in. I love this bottle, by the way, the design in the back, very pretty. 
and I have seen pretty mixed reviews. Some people really like it and some people just don't really care for this fragrance or they think it's okay but not really amazing. It's been a while since I've smelled it so let me refresh my memory. Oh yeah, it's good. It smells so clean and fresh. A little bit energizing, invigorating. And it does kind of remind me of like getting up early in the morning and taking a brisk walk through New York City. If you love fresh and clean fragrances, I think you will love this. I don't think it's outrageously unique. I wouldn't put it in the same hemisphere as Baccarat Rouge 540, so I can see the letdown, why people would maybe say it's disappointing, but it's not meant to be the same. You know, not every fragrance has to smell like Baccarat. They're totally different. Clean linens, fresh laundry. It's a very airy fragrance. The type of fragrance you would wear with a crisp white button down, something like what I'm wearing today. I think it's beautiful. This to me is like a Upper East Side soccer mom who's running errands for the day, you know, just a little light something. You smell really fresh. You smell really nice, but that's about it. You know, you just smell really good. People aren't going to follow you down the street and ask you what fragrance you're wearing. If you follow along the clean girl aesthetic, which has been a really popular term trending on social media, I think this fragrance falls into that category perfectly. It just smells like the type of person who has their stuff together. When I smell 724, it's giving me rich mom vibes. Rich mom, Pilates mom, hair back in a ponytail and she's walking fast because she has somewhere to be and she doesn't have time. So I really like it. I think for spring, summer, this will be really beautiful. It's just actually any time. I don't think this really fits into one season. It's just a light everyday fragrance. This is going to be your casual, chic, but smell really good type of perfume. This is another exciting new launch that I've heard a lot of buzz about. It's Paradox Prada Eau de Parfum. And I have opened this box, but I held on to the packaging just so I could do a true unboxing with you. But I've smelled this fragrance. I really like it. This is another kind of polarizing new launch. I think we're all in agreement, however, that this bottle is the best fragrance bottle maybe ever in the designer world. I think this is so cute, very Pinterest, Instagram. I mean, everybody who buys this is going to take a photo of this bottle because it's so pretty. I love that it sits on the side when it's sitting on your vanity. It just catches your attention. This is such an attention grabbing bottle. I think all of the fashionistas are going to love this fragrance does not smell overly unique. In fact, I would compare it to several other designer fragrances, but it still smells really amazing. Those other fragrances smell amazing too, so you can't really be mad at it. The keynotes listed are Neroli Bud, White Amber, and White Musk, but when I smell this fragrance, I get smacked in the face with Jasmine. There's a little sweetness in there. It's a little bit bubblegum. Reminds me a lot of the new Gucci Jasmine fragrance. Giorgio Armani My Way, I've heard a lot of people throw that one out there. Valentino Voce Viva, there are several that all kind of smell similar-ish. There are differences between them, but if you like one, chances are high you will like the rest. You might not necessarily want them all in your collection, for a designer fragrance, it smells incredible. It's balanced, it's sweet, but it's not too sweet. It's not cloying. It's a little musky. It feels very appropriate for fall winter. It smells chic, like a very elevated everyday fragrance. You could wear this as a signature scent, but you're gonna smell really good. Like you're pulling out the good stuff on a daily basis. It doesn't have the orange blossom or that really creamy vanilla that My Way has. But because it has the white amber, it does have a little warmth. There's a little like sensual, smooth creaminess, but it's not like a really heavy vanilla creaminess. Now, do I love the bottle more than the fragrance inside? It's probably too soon to tell, but I have worn this out several times and I enjoy it. I think it's a really fun, flirty fragrance. It leans very feminine. 
And because the bottle is just so undeniably cool, I think this is going to be one of the most requested fragrances for the holidays. This is going to be on everybody's gift list. If you haven't had a chance to try this yet, I highly recommend going into it with an open mind, not expecting this to completely blow you away and smell like some really obscure niche fragrance. And I think you will really enjoy it. It's so pretty. It's a pretty floral. Now this is something for all of the gentlemen celebrating 60 years of James Bond, a new launch from Floris London. I was very excited whenever I saw this on my doorstep because I remember hearing that they had an exciting new launch in the works and I believe it was the original James Bond or the actor who played James Bond wore a Floris London fragrance. So Floris London and James Bond go back a long time. They have those deep ties. So it only makes sense for them to release a fragrance in celebration. This is number 007 Eau de Parfum. A rich and spicy fragrance with amber at its base, this captivating scent is a blend of refreshing citrus and juniper notes set against a subtly smoky accord with flashes of spicy dianthus, carnation, and an aromatic heart created by a fusion of rose, lavender, rosemary, and geranium. It has to be good. You cannot create a 007 James Bond inspired fragrance and have it not be the sexiest men's fragrance ever. So let's see. I know my husband is so excited to try this. He is a lucky man because he ends up getting all of these fragrances that I can't wear. Okay, let's see. Ooh, it is spicy. That's delicious. Oh, it is spicy. Yummy. It's kind of like a cinnamon cardamom spiciness. It's magical. This is really good. Not something that I would wear, although... No, it's not. I really like it, but it's the type of fragrance that I want to smell on my husband, not a fragrance that I would wear. But I do really like it, but I wouldn't wear it. I would have to layer it with something really sweet and vanilla. I think a vanilla fragrance would pair beautifully with this. In case you like really bold, spicy, subtly smoky fragrances, this could be perfect for you. It's not overly masculine. It's not really woody or earthy. It smells really good. This is a sexy fragrance for a man. It had to be. I like that it's not too much. It's very charming. You kind of want to keep smelling it. It's not so intense that a little bit goes a long way. It really does kind of draw you in. It smells luxurious. It smells very decadent. It smells like a very well-dressed man. So if you've been with me for a while and you're familiar with my fragrance taste, you know how much I love Roja Parfums. They carry some of my most all-time favorite fragrances like 51, Elixir. Well, they released Manhattan. This is a fragrance that they had launched, I think, last year at some point. They only launched maybe 100 bottles and it instantly sold out. They brought it back out and this is available right now on twistedlily.com and there are samples available. So this is a very special limited launch fragrance. It says Manhattan in the beautiful Art Deco font. You have the Empire State Building on the side. I have never smelled this fragrance before. But when I heard about it, I knew I had to give it a try. How epic is this fragrance bottle? It is so stunning with the rhinestones on the cap, the beautiful label in the front. It says Manhattan and then on the back, you can kind of see the back of the label. It's very great Gatsby, glamorous, so pretty. It's inspired by the morning sunrise over Manhattan, illuminating the city that never sleeps. Keynotes include bergamot, basil, lavender, cedarwood, pine, patchouli, tobacco, heliotrope, vanilla, benzoin, and coconut. Based strictly on the notes alone, I'm not sure how I'm gonna feel about this fragrance. I love a base with coconut and vanilla, so that sounds really safe but I'm not sure. I love the bottle. The bottle is 20 out of 10, one of the prettiest fragrance bottles in my collection. But let's see. Let's see if it reminds me of Manhattan. Oh. Oh, wow. It's so pretty. 
<sighs> it's beautiful. Definitely a unisex fragrance. There were so many woody notes listed in the middle, the heart of the fragrance, that I thought, ooh, I'm not sure which way this is going to go. I get a very smooth woody fragrance, but there's a hint of sweetness. I definitely pick up on the vanilla and the coconut. As it's drying down, the wood is getting really prominent. So I'm not sure this is going to be something I would love to wear on its own. I think it would probably layer really nicely with something else. There's a lot going on. You can definitely tell this is like a craft niche fragrance. It's something really special. Polar opposite to Paradox or a designer fragrance that smells really common. This smells very uncommon, unexpected. If I just sort of smell the blotter and just enjoy it. Just enjoy the fragrance without trying to pinpoint notes and try to put it in a box or put it in a category. It's just enjoyable. It's a very pleasurable fragrance. Maybe I'll wear this. I don't know what fragrance I'm going to wear today. This is a PR box that I've had for a while now and it's about time I unbox this. It was sent over from Maison Margiela, which is kind of a pinch me moment because I just could not imagine ever receiving a complimentary gifts from such a prestigious fragrance house. So I'm incredibly grateful to all of you for caring about my opinion when it comes to fragrances because it's thanks to you that I am gifted such amazing things. <gasps> Ooh, this is so interesting. It's very artistic. Matcha meditation. We have the scented candle and the fragrance. I have never smelled this. Never ever. And I have visited my local Sephora and I've sought out this fragrance to smell it and it just wasn't available yet. So I'm excited to finally smell this fragrance. The replica candles are amazing. I have the bubble bath candle. I've been using that quite a bit. Matcha meditation is inspired by the peaceful moment your mind escapes and your senses awaken. Keynotes include Bergma Essence, Mandarin Essence, Green Tea Accord, Matcha Accord, Orange Flower Absolute, Jasmine Accord, Moss Accord, White Chocolate Accord, and Cedar Essence. The reason I was so interested in trying this fragrance is because I love matcha. I know some people don't really care for it, but I am a huge matcha fan. So let's see. Matcha meditation. I've also been really leaning into all of my tea fragrances lately. Oh, it's so pretty. Very matcha tea forward. Oh yeah, it smells like matcha. <laughs> but it's a little bit sweet. I pick up on the white chocolate, which is so nice. It's a really pretty combination. Kind of smells like something you would get from Starbucks. <laughs> It's potent. It's incredibly strong. What an interesting fragrance. This is so unique. It's very different from even my other tea-centric fragrances. It smells edible. I need to wear this on the skin because right now I can definitely picture it in a candle. I'm very excited to light that candle. But I just, I don't know what will happen when I wear this fragrance. I'm curious to see what it smells like on the skin, if it maintains that sweetness and that relaxing quality or if it gets a little bit heavier because the tea is very earthy and it's very intense. I'm not sure what's going to stand out on my skin. It's not my usual style of fragrance, but I think it's very pretty. I'm excited to light the candle and I'm going to wear it on my skin and see what happens. I have a feeling I will most likely layer it with something else. My nose is definitely overwhelmed at this point, but I have one last fragrance to share with you. This launches today on the Twisted Lily website. It's the new launch from Maison Crevelli, Amber Chromatique. I love amber fragrances, especially fall winter, and the notes on this sound incredible. Maison Crivelli teams up once again with iconic perfumer Quentin Bish to create the Amber Chromatique Extra de Parfum, built around one of the most popular raw materials in perfumery, amber. This scent carries notes of incense, pink peppercorn, divana, osmanthus, and vanilla bourbon. 
I love these bright, vibrant orange bottles. So pretty. There's a hibiscus fragrance from Maison Crivelli that I know went viral and everybody loves it and swears by it. I liked it. Wasn't my absolute favorite. I don't think I've found a fragrance from the brand yet that really blows me away. So hopefully this will be it. The notes sound incredible. Let's see. Oh yeah. Wow. That's really pretty. Wow. There's so much going on. This is one of the most unique fragrances I have ever smelled and it's very bold and spicy, a little bit floral. It's like my nose isn't quite sure what to smell. It's a bit smoky as well. Very spicy. But there's a sweetness and the floral component from the Divana. If you love amber, I think this is worth trying. First impression is that I really like it. I've smelled so many bold, spicy, interesting fragrances that it's one that I will have to revisit, but I do think it's very pretty. I was just looking behind me at all of the fragrances I've unboxed today and smelling the blotter cards again. It's very difficult to choose favorites, but if I had to choose two just true standouts, I would say on the feminine side, Prada Paradox. I don't care if it's not unique. I love this bottle. I love the fragrance itself. I think it's just very cool and chic. And then the Florist London 007 fragrance for men. This is outstanding. Maybe one of my favorite new fragrances for the guys. I mean, this is so delicious that I want to wear it. It's not my style of fragrance, but I'm tempted because it just smells so good. And that completes today's fragrance haul. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.